You're listening to the Better for America podcast presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. Today, we have the privilege of spending time with someone who has been on the front lines defending our nation's southern border, and more than that, a man who has given his life, in effect, to you and to me. I'm talking about former U.S. Marine and former Border Commissioner Mark Morgan. Now, Mark has 30 years of law enforcement experience. He has been a former Border Commissioner, and today he works on border and immigration, but his reach is wider than that that meets the eye because he also works on diverse issues from public safety here to really watching China. As the head of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency, or CBP, he oversaw 60,000 employees. CBP's mission included counterterrorism and trade law enforcement, as well as border security. And he has served as an acting director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Mr. Morgan has wide international experience, including service as the FBI's on-scene commander in Baghdad, Iraq in 2008. And while he also has state level experience, his Semper Fidelis attitude, always faithful, may come from being a former U.S. Marine. I'd like everybody to help me welcome uh, someone we call our friend, Mr. Uh, Mark Morgan. Thank you so much, Mark, for being with us today. Rebecca, I really appreciate you having me. And thanks for the introduction. I I think when I hear this sometimes, what I think is, hey, clearly I can't keep a job, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, your life experiences, are, I think, are so perfectly fitted uh, in this world today in which we live uh, with threats. They're multiplying. Uh, and the importance of both response and deterrence, that, that is growing. And I think most Americans, certainly our 2.4 million AMAC members, understand that our nation is at risk. We see record homicides in many cities. Uh, and we see internal and external threats that are growing, uh, federal mismanagement. We f- see the defunding and the demoralization of the, our brave uh, law enforcement officers nationwide. And I think that this is compounded by the international threats that we face. So I wanna start where I think we should start, and that is at the Southern border. Uh, We have recently been there. AMAC was down there. We saw firsthand the growing threat to our sovereignty, uh, the public health threat that we're facing. It is really so sobering. If you could, Mark Morgan, tell us your view of what is happening, what it means, and what we should be doing to stop what we're seeing occur at the southern border. Rebecca, I appreciate that because I think the way you phrase the question is the right way. And there's there's a lot of misinformation with respect to what's happened on the southwest border. A lot of it is intentionally misleading spin and blatant lies coming from this current administration. Look, this is first and foremost about border security. It's not about first and foremost illegal immigration. Illegal immigration is just a subset of the vast complex threats that we face at our borders. And when you unsecure your borders and you open them up to one crisis or one threat, you're opening our borders up to the vast set set of threats and and, and, uh, um, issues that we face. Look, when you open your borders up to the the first 12 months of this administration, we're looking at 2 million apprehensions. Think about that. Those numbers are catastrophic. It's the most we've had in our lifetime. You're pulling very limited border patrol resources, 60, 70 percent of the resources off their off the front line, off their national security mission to process two million. So what happens? Large areas of our borders are wide open, unpatrolled and unmonitored. Gang members are pouring in. Criminal aliens are pouring in. Drugs are pouring in. And we have an exponential increase in the threat with respect to our national security. That's all happening because of this administration's open border policies. Yeah. And, and I think those listening understand that um, it's got to be intentional. I mean, you, you can't tell me that um, the administration, Biden, Harris, and the rest are not aware of what this really is developing into. Uh, we see record number of fentanyl crossing our border. We know that over 100,000 people have died in 2021 due to drug overdoses. We see human trafficking like we've never heard of before. Uh, and as you said, these... Um, what I believe is, is, is possible terrorist threats that um, so many have been stopped, but my goodness, uh, are terrorist threats, in your opinion, a real threat right here in America? And if so, how serious do you think that yeah. would be? 
Well, first of all, Rebecca, again, everything you just said is spot on. I couldn't have said it better myself. And the answer to that to me is unequivocal. Yes. Look, I also spent 20 years in the FBI. One of the tours I did, I was a special, in a special agent in charge of the FBI's El Paso division. And you know, from my office window, I could see Juarez. I could see the border. And I can tell you, especially now with Afghanistan returning to once again a, a haven and, and terrorist operating base, their commitment and their resolve to do the United States harm, both abroad and here at home, that commitment, Rebecca, is alive and well. And they continue to look for every opportunity to exploit. And they have to look no further than our Southwest border. Look, in the last 12 months, Border Patrol have apprehended uh, illegal aliens from 150 different countries, including China, including uh, Iraq, including, uh, the list goes on and on. There's a misnomer out there that this is just about migrants coming from Mexico or the Northern Triangle countries. That's simply a lie. This same 12 month period that Border Patrol have apprehended 15 illegal aliens on the FBI's terror screening database. Now, now keep that in mind when I tell you about the next number. Also in the same 12 month period, again, because the border is wide open and Border Patrol agents are pulled off the line to process 2 million, 600,000 illegal aliens have broken in this country and evaded apprehension. 600,000, Rebecca. That's the same size as the entire state of Vermont that have broken in and gotten away because our border is wide open. Who knows who is in that 600,000? Yeah, and this is precisely why we do this show. This is why we look to bring on experts like you to educate the public and to make people aware that we've got to elect the right people in office when we've got elected uh, folks that are just turning a blind eye that are really just not putting America first, putting America last. Uh, it's our job, we feel here at AMAC to make sure that people are hearing the truth and you really paint a grave picture, one that really calls for action. And that's something that AMAC members are committed to advancing. So I wanna shift just a moment here and turn to what is happening uh, internally, what happened in 2020 with nationwide riots and then the police defunding following these riots. We saw lockdowns, uh, which seemed to continue handicapping whole cities, really keeping people from work, from normal life. And many of us look at cuts to police uh, as a growing public uh, issue and actions by this White House don't reinforce uh, the police uh, and, and say, you know, the, the, our, our police officers are important. So uh, again, I just want people listening understand and they see the news, they're watching the spiking homicide rates, people are buying guns to protect themselves and their families. Uh, and it, it is, is, I think, rising uh, our anxiety on a national le level, but we, we need to return to common sense. Now, you know that law enforcement, uh, you know it very well inside and out, and the courage that it takes, really. Could you help us understand this issue more fully, what it means when we talk about defunding our yeah. law? Yeah, Rebecca, so as I was listening, you said something very important, common sense, right? Look, let's, let's, look, your listeners, they don't have to, to, to take my word for it, right? But, but what I encourage them to do is, is listen and then go do their own research and look at the facts. So right now with the defund the police movement, let's just look at the, the top 10 cities where, where crime is increasing, homicide rate is, is off the charts. They're all democratic run cities. They're all defund the police movements. They're all sanctuary city uh, 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 entities. Th that's just a fact. That's not being made up. Look, when, when you talked about the riots, and I think this is what's so frustrating, again, common sense. I think the people are finally seeing this. If, if you look at January 6th, and look, make no mistake, uh, what, what we saw on January 6th was wrong, that people that, that broke into the Capitol, they should be prosecuted. Um, now, look, th there's a lot of theatrics and, and misrepresent misrepresentation that's going on right now. But, but let's, let's look at the hypocrisy, because let's look at what's happened in Portland. Another symbol of America, uh, of, of our justice system, a federal courthouse was being attacked every single day. It was trying to be burnt to the ground. Meanwhile, it, as, as fires are, are, are happening literally behind the mainstream media, they're saying mostly peaceful protests. Well, where, where's DOJ on that? Where's the other organizations that should be investigating what was happening? The hypocrisy and the political motivated uh, movement that we're having right now is absolutely detrimental to this entire country. Yeah, thank you, Mark. This is, thank you for sharing that. You really have had an extraordinary career and you have such depth and experience. Uh, before I move to the international side, let me ask you about something that troubles Americans south to north, east to west. And this is the number of young people 
that are dying to drug overdoses. We see spikes in the ER room, incidences uh, and deaths that we haven't seen before, over 100,000 you mentioned, I mentioned last year alone. Uh, and I, I feel like these young lives are lost without warning, uh, really just snuffed out by, by high potency fentanyl, synthetics, heroin, other international sources of drugs. How did this happen? How can we stop this heartbreak? And is the poorest southwestern border a big part of this issue? Is that where it it's is, coming from? Yeah, Re Rebecca, look, this is another great question. And look, th th this really does take a whole government approach, not just from the federal government, but local communities, uh, state organizations. So we, we, we have to uh, address the addiction issue and et cetera. OK, so full stop on that. So we, we have to get better as a country at that. But at the end of the day, we also have to stop the supply of drugs from easily entering this country. And right now, look, take th this, your listeners can take my word for this. The overwhelming majority of drugs in this country come from outside the United States. And the majority of those come through the Southwest border. And that's why I say what's happening in the Southwest border is not about illegal immigration. It's about border security first. We have to stop all the threats. You mentioned 100,000 drug overdoses in a 12 month period. That's the most in our lifetime ever recorded on history. That's 100,000 lives. And here's another misnomer is that they think, oh, well, a lot of people, oh, these are just bad people and they're drug addicts. That's just not true. Look, I can't tell how many mothers and fathers I've talked to where a 15 year old girl or, or boy, a good a good kid, a normal kid goes to a party. They're, they're depressed or full of drama as sometimes 14, 15 year olds can. And somebody says, hey, why don't you take this Percocet pill? Well, they didn't realize it's laced with fentanyl. The first and only pill that they've ever taken was poisoned with fentanyl and they die. That's not an uncommon story in this country. And where was, where does the majority of fentanyl come? From the Southwest border. The precursor com chemicals come from China, go to Mexico, they lace it with other drugs and it gets across the Southwest border because it's wide open now. Historic numbers of fentanyl, historic number of America lives have been lost, strategies in this country that I think are preventable if we secure our border, Rebecca. Yeah, and for everybody listening, I mean, in my view, Personally, all I have to hear is what we've talked about so far to know that Joe Biden is not doing a good job leading our country. Uh, and anyone who supports him uh, has got to, can't, can't ignore this, this very issue that he is fully aware that we have unprecedented number of people, many of whom are in terrorist watch lists that are coming across our, our country. We see human trafficking, we see drug overdoses, we see drugs that are entering our nation. And we have a president who wants to talk about you know, COVID and other things. Meanwhile, there's no real plan to make sure that we're not bringing in hundreds of thousands of people infected with COVID. So we've got to use our own common sense. We've got to begin to connect the dots and ask the questions, ask the questions and see what kind of answers we come up with. Uh, what I keep coming up with and the people that I'm interviewing each and every week, they're saying, no, uh, Mr. President Joe Biden is fully aware uh, but doesn't feel that this is something that needs to be addressed. So we've got to ask ourselves yeah. why that is. And uh, I do want to turn a little bit to, uh, to in your international experience, because this is another issue that's very important to AMAC members. Uh, well, I want to Rebecca, if, if, yeah. if, you, if you don't mind, I'm sorry, Rick, if you don't mind, because you said something that's very important that, that I need to address. First of all, let's talk about COVID real quick. So, so yeah. as, as if, you're, if you're someone that's trying to come into our country legally, Right, you, you have to be vaccinated and have a test 24 hours before you board the plane. If you're an American citizen and you want to keep your job, put food on the table and pay your mortgage, you have to get vaccinated. But if you're an illegal alien break into our country, not, not only do you not have to be tested, but you don't have to have, a, 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 there's no vaccine mandate. And we know that up to 25% of those breaking our country have active COVID. On what planet does that make sense? And it goes back to the other question, I think you're spot on. I've been doing this for 35 years. I've served under six administrations, both Republican and Democrat. I can draw no other conclusion with the reason why they're opening their borders up and putting America last is they see a perceived political benefit. They believe that every single illegal alien they find a pathway to citizenship is going to equate to a Democratic vote. I truly believe, based on my 35 years, this administration is putting their political party first and America last, and it's absolutely disgusting. That is a very sad truth. And this is, again, why we, we speak to our, our AMAC members. Uh, we've got over 2 million members in all 50 states. And these are folks that love our country, love what we stand for, love our values. 
And we, we ought to, all of us ought to be very concerned about this. We've got to make it something important that we speak with our friends, our family, our relatives about, because there will come a time where we're going to have to make choices and elect different people in, and we ought to know where they stand on the Southern border. This is a major, major um, concern. And uh, it's the reason why we were down there, Mark, with you. We went down, we said, let's, let's talk to AMAC members that are being impacted. Let's hear what they have to say. This is a real, real issue. And boy, when you go down there, it's quite sobering. And um, you recognize how much work really needs to be done. Uh, these wonderful folks that are doing all they can to protect American citizens uh, and prevent uh, terrorists from coming over over the border wall and uh, over the border. And they certainly aren't getting the support from the administration that we, we certainly uh, believe that they deserve. So I want to thank you. Um, for, for your feedback there. And, and I do want to turn to uh, sort of some of our international issues that we're confronted with. We did watch the Biden administration sort of execute a very chaotic, a morally uh, indefensible scamper out of Afghanistan. Uh, these were terms dictated by a terrorist group with tens of thousands of American credentialed people still there. Uh, those who helped our military, our embassy, um, permanent residents, even some citizens by public reports, how could they have gotten it so wrong? How could uh, the Biden administration have gotten it so long? And what does it mean to our future, the way in which we pulled out of Afghanistan? How does this impact America's future? Yeah, this, this has a, a special meaning for me because uh, I also, as you mentioned, I served 10 years as, as a United States Marine. As you said, I deployed over to Iraq as well while I was in the FBI. And then, of course, I see what's happening outside our borders from a time as commissioner. And, and you're right. Th this was just you cannot defend what happened. And, and I really think, unfortunately, what you're going to see as the years go by, what's going to unfold is, is that, you know, the, the date to withdraw was politically driven. Uh, I believe that this president chose that date. So on the anniversary, he could say, look, we, we pulled out of, of uh, Afghanistan. And that's just horrific. Um, and with there, there's so, so much misinformation and lies being told about what happened. First of all, we saw the stories, right, of, of you know, uh, individuals falling off of an airplane as they were hanging on, or babies being thrown over the wall. And let's not forget about the 13 servicemen and women that lost their lives. We, we know all of that. But what's going on behind with respect to how they got people out? Rebecca, there was no vetting being done. That they, I've actually seen the, the administrative uh, officials say, yeah, that vetting was being done. That's just a lie. It, what, what they're not telling you is there's no substantive vetting was being done. They were just putting people on planes as fast as possible and getting them out of there. And then 65,000 of them have made their way to the United States. Here's another lie that they're telling you is that of that 65,000 that has made it to the United States, the overwhelming majority of them are not special interest visa applicants, meaning they did nothing for American troops. They, now look, I believe we have a responsibility for those that helped American troops and, and those that are American citizens that have passports uh, to, to, uh, to bring them here and take care of them, which we didn't, we left a lot of them behind. But the majority of just Afghans that wanted to leave and, and we brought them over the United States without betting, we don't know who they are. It, it, it just it defies common sense. And again, it's about America last um, rather than doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, when you say that and we, we process this, these truths and numbers don't lie. These are this is, you know, people can look up this information. Um, again, it goes back to why do we have a U.S. president who is denying uh, this horrendous botched withdrawal from, from Afghanistan and sort of using an excuse of, oh, it would have been difficult for anybody. There's no easy, easy way to do it. I think the American people are much smarter uh, and we've got to stay focused. We've got to pay attention. You are one of the rare Americans who really helped us stabilize Iraq. You spend time in Middle East during periods of high instability. So I want to ask you about two other issues. Is the Biden administration Seems to me that they're enamored of Iran. Are they doing the right thing there with Iran? And second, uh, it seems like I'm waking up every day to more news of China moving into an increasingly aggressive economic and military position. How dangerous is China to US today? So both Iran and China, if you could. Yeah, yeah. So Rebecca, I, I think you're spot on. And look real quick, if I, if I can finish up on that Afghanistan issue too. Look, it was really pretty simple. Anybody that were evacuating, we should have kept them in the surf th uh, safe third country until we completed a full extensive background. 
right? We should have never allowed someone in the United States that we had no idea who they are. It wasn't that complicated. So now let's shift to, to, to Iran and China. Look, I, I, as I said, I spent 20 years in the FBI. Make no mistake that China is a, is a, is a real threat on multiple fronts. Um, whether it's, it's a con, you know, counter proliferation of, of, of some of our most sensitive uh, uh, corporate uh, techniques and, 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 and ideas that we have, as well as drugs pouring in, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, look, this administration, what I've seen again and again, regardless of whether it's Iran, whether it's China, whether it's Russia, uh, whether it's Mexico, uh, they, they have given away the leverage that we have developed, especially under the Trump administration, where we were seen as someone that was strong, someone that was gonna put America first. I believe in every single instant with, the, with respect to uh, the international relations, we've given that away. We become weak instead of being the strongest nation uh, in, in the country. And that I think you can say with respect to the international relations across the board. Yeah. Well, I do see that you've got such a great deal of expertise, and I appreciate that you're able to offer some counsel to us during these turbulent times. Let me ask you, as you look out across the landscape politically uh, for law enforcement at the border internationally, what would you offer for an assessment of what this year, 2022, will bring or could bring, both in terms of threats and, and our reasons to be optimistic? Can we turn a corner this year? And can we turn some of these, these threats back? You mentioned that um, Biden has sort of given up a lot of the leverage that Trump uh, did so much good for our nation. Uh, what do you see and how do you assess the year ahead? Yeah, look, we, we again, I, I think we can. We did it. We, we saw America uh, come from a position of strength and use our tools to leverage both diplomatically and, and through uh, other means to really regain that strength and do what was in America's best interest. And I do believe that's been given away. The Southwest border is a, a clear example of that. Uh, the Remain in Mexico program they did away with. The asylum and cooperative agreements that we had with all three Northern Triangle countries, they did away with. The leverage we had with the threat of taking away money from the Northern Triangle countries and uh, levying tariffs against Mexico, that was effective to get all those countries to join to address the crisis of the Southwest border we were experiencing in 2019 as the regional crisis. You had 20, 25,000 personnel that Mexico was not only utilizing to strengthen their Southern border, but also interior enforcement. You saw the numbers dip to an all time low. And with the stroke of a political in this administration erased it all and now we're seeing catastrophic historic highs that they inherit the most secure border in our lifetime and they now we have the the most insecure border in our lifetime every day gets less secure and our country gets less less safe now do they know what to do rebecca yes yeah they absolutely we've done it before and my, my advice to them right now is just take a page out of the, the Trump era playbook and we can secure that border and make our country less uh, 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 more safe but here's where I, I'm a skeptic. They're not going to do it. They've shown again and again, not only are they refusing to secure our border, but they're doubling down on encouraging illegal immigration and we're leaving our border wide open again because they see a perceived political benefit. The only thing they're doing right now on the southwest border, they're just getting more effective at releasing people. That's where we're at right now. Unfortunately, yeah, this should enrage every American. Sure. Every American should be concerned. Every American should should recognize when we're hearing uh, Joe Biden talk, we ought to be pressing him more on these questions. He doesn't take questions. He doesn't want to talk about the border. Uh, they skirt the issue. Uh, everyone uh, in the world knows that the border is wide open. Tom Holman said it himself. And oh. as you mentioned, 150 different countries, it's not the way to come through, right? So something it, you know, just it doesn't feel right, doesn't look right. It, it's not right. We know that this is a, a big threat to our future. And uh, I pray that we turn a corner this year. I pray that we can elect some better leaders. And, um, you know, we love our country so much here at AMAC and we want to do everything we can. So it's mind boggling. I almost don't have words when I hear about some of what's going on. You feel like we don't have a president who loves our country the way you and I do. Well, I want to. And we're back if I can. So I, I agree with you. And look, I get asked all the time, hey, Mark, you must be frustrated that that really the Biden administration inherited the most secure board in our lifetime and they destroyed it on day one with the stroke of a political pen. I said, yeah, absolutely, clearly. But I said, what's equally as frustrating me is they're lying to the American people about it. 
And that's what's so frustrating. DHS Secretary Mayorkas, almost everything that comes out of that, math man, that man's mouth, Rebecca, with respect to the border security, illegal immigration, is simply a lie. It's just simply not true. And as an American, I cannot believe, look, I've been at the highest level. I know they're lying. And that's what's so frustrating. Look, they talk about uh, 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 humanity for the migrants themselves. Well, the most inhumane thing that this country can do for the migrants themselves is to have open borders. CNN just uh, re recently uh, sent out a report that the past 12, first 12 months of this administration, 600 migrants have died trying to illegally enter. Thousands, thousands are abused and exploited on the way up. As you mentioned, human trafficking is off the charts. I could go on and on. Open border policies are actually the most inhumane thing, not just for America, but for the migrants themselves. But yet the mainstream media, not a single word. Just a few weeks ago, we had a U.S. mother and father that was killed in a traffic accident by an illegal alien running from the police department and T-boned this mother and, and, and daughter uh, uh, couple. And yet the mainstream media, not one mention of that. It's hypocrisy, it's reckless, it's irresponsible. And the last thing I'll say is, 2022 matters, but Rebecca, that's why I wanted to come on here so much because every one of your listeners right now, they can take action now. Get your state's AGs involved. Get your state governors involved. Demand that they take action now to secure our Southwest border like Texas is, like Missouri is, like Florida is. Uh, and finally, the AG in, in Arizona is finally stepping up with some lawsuits. They can make a difference and make a difference now. We can't wait till 2022. That's right. Well, we're going to continue to pray uh, for, for strong leadership. We're going to keep our eye on things. We're going to report to AMAC members. We love having uh, real smart uh, professionals like you, sir, on this show, because, um, you know, for people that don't know it firsthand, we've got to listen to you. We've got to listen to people who have been there, who have seen it, who know firsthand. I want to thank you so much, Mark, because your ex expertise is truly a gift to our membership. And uh, your experience on these issues matter to all Americans. So thank you very, very much for sharing uh, your insight and your analysis with us today. I do hope to have you back in 2022. We'd love to Absolutely. have you. Absolutely. Rebecca, anytime. Thanks for having me. If you, if you call, I'll be on. Excellent. And I want to thank everybody out there listening, all of our members. Thank you for tuning in today. And if you haven't downloaded the AMAC News app, you can watch and listen to this show and track breaking news right there on the AMAC News app right from your smartphone, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, follow, like, and share wherever you are on social media. Until next time, everyone, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. God bless you and have a great day, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Better for America podcast. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, visit us at www.amac.us.